Hey, good morning. This is what I'm working on today. The old uh, Brown and Sharp milling machine. And uh, I'm going to adapt the exotic tree angle cutting head and the exotic wall hopter boring and facing head to the, the number 50 spindle. And uh, what I got in here is uh, an old collet chuck, um, an ER40 collet chuck that probably got bent in a CNC machine and I got it for next to nothing. And I cut the end of it off here and stuck it in the dividing head and I can get that part to run true. But I couldn't get it to run, <laughs> run true before I sawed the pieces off. So anyway, I'm going to take the, the this part of the collet chuck and it's threaded internally and it's uh, a 22 millimeter by uh, one and a half millimeter thread. So I got to cut a, um, a male metric thread and then a male um, English thread to adapt these uh, two heads to the machine. <laughs> so that's that's what I'm gonna do and uh, here I am here I am uh, I hope you're all doing good today and uh, so uh, the advantage of um, having the fabulous Monarch 10 double E inch metric clay is I'm gonna make an adapter that's both uh, English and metric, and that's something real common I've done with this machine over the 20 years that I've had it. So all I got to do to uh, switch from um, English to metric is just flip these levers and, and this knob. This one, that one, and that one, and the knob. And uh, it's... Uh, Cutting metric threads, and that's pretty cool. You know, that's some uh, cool old technology. And uh, these old heads here are uh, old technology too. And these were really hot items before the um, CNC machines came along. And they were very, very expensive in the day. Uh, this wall hopter head was $10,000 in the 1990s. And uh, I remember these being from uh, going from $3,800 to something like $4,800 at one point. But uh, when the CNC machines came on, uh, this stuff... Uh, Ended up at auctions and things like that. Uh, this came out of the Boring Surplus store here, and it got separated from its box of stuff. And, uh, you know, actually, the box of stuff that comes with a wall hopper head is just totally useless to me anyway, because I make my own tooling and make it better. But... Uh, this was uh, just an orphan head, and I just paid hundreds for it. I can't, I can't remember... Uh, uh, what I uh, paid for that. Then the, the plastic mole guy here got a couple of these heads, uh, a really good deal on them, and I got uh, this one uh, from him. So, you know, I don't have very much in these heads, but I got, uh, I get a lot of this stuff that I have, I've got it back when the kitten was good. <laughs> like that machine there, you know, uh, they, uh, just uh, not very much of a demand for that kind of a machine or or people really didn't know they existed just like this stuff here people really didn't know about it okay so i'm going to kick around and uh, get those adapted to this machine i think it's going to be really awesome because this uh this mill here has uh, five horsepower and it's just got a just a, a lot of oomph that'll drive that uh 15 pound uh, wall hopper just fine. The, these are really pretty light duty heads, so you really you really don't want to um, hog with them, and uh, especially the tree head. But the tree the tree will cut angles. You can cut internal snap ring grooves and all kinds of stuff. You can do the same with this facing. You can also bore with it with both of them, but. Uh, I like the regular boring heads. Uh, I just got got used to them. Um, 
for uh, for straight boring because these things got gears and stuff in them. I I just I don't know. I don't like boring straight holes with them. I like doing what they uh, uh, the cool things they do, like facing and angle cutting. And you can also cut uh, angles. Uh, they're kind of fixed angles with uh, with the wall hopper by um, running the facing and then feeding your machine at the same time. And you can kind of vary that a little bit. But uh, the tree head, you can set it uh, uh, precise angles. Okay, so I'm gonna fire up this uh, Monarch 10WE and I'll be back, okay. <laughs> hey, I got a hot piece here. What I've done is I roughed out this piece on the uh, old uh, Monarch 10 E manufacturing lathe because it doesn't make sense. I'm going to set that down to make a lot of roughing cuts on the toolmaker's lathe. So to preserve that machine, I rough out parts like that. This part needs to be threaded both ends, one end metric, one end English. That's hot. Okay, so I'll get set up to do that and I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, I'm back here. I'm gonna reset this, uh, the uh, ELSR stop. I don't know what the heck happened, but somehow I got way off on it. So I'm going to start again, and I'm going to put the tool in a good place for it to stop, which is right about there. I'm going to set this travel dial to zero, and then I'm going to start the spindle here. I got it, I got it running at the speed I'm going to cut the thread out. So I gotta take and loosen the, the, the dog here. Push it forward. I'm gonna take the adjuster knob for the kick out for and turn it until the spindle stops. Something just about like that, a little bit more. A tiny bit more, because the carriage should be traveling. Okay, I'll lock that down. Make sure that's something neutral. Pull it back. Start it up. I'm going to take the tool out, and I'm going to watch out when the travel dial stops. Okay, travel three. See where the travel dial stops. If it stops just about 15 thousandths after, and that's well within range where I want to be, that's good enough, I think. It is just perfect. Okay, so that's good. So I'll leave it locked up, and uh, when you want to reverse the tool now, you just lift up on the lever and the whole machine reverses. See? That way it'll keep sync with the, uh, the metric thread. So we'll go ahead and uh, get that metric thread cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and back over here, get set up for it, just like that. I'm going to back the compound off here a little bit. I'm going to touch off with the tool. It 
Let's see, let me bring it back. I'm going to go ahead and use the stop here. Then you engage. There, the, there it stops. Then you loosen the front lock here, and then you can screw the tool in to the work, relock it. I'll back it off and move. I have to move it back with the, with the spindle. So now, when you go forward here, um, it stops. Right at, right, at, right at your depth, then you feed with the top slide. Or if you want to feed with the, uh, the cross slide, you just loosen the lock, and you can watch the outer dial and, and feed in uh, the amount you want. So let's take a, a good healthy bite here, about 25 thousandths deep. Get some juice on there, and start cutting this thread. 1.5 millimeter thread on 20 millimeters. <laughs> okay, it's looking good. So I'm going to start cutting right now. Here we go. Okay, back it up. Kick it in. Get some juice on there. Took a good bite out of that thing right off. Okay, ready to go. No hands. Isn't that weird? Pretty cool. Almost, there's just a little bit more it should cut. But you know what? I'm going to trim that off and not worry about it. Just not going to worry about it because I got an awful close shoulder there. I think it's looking pretty good. Keep cutting. Get some juice on there. Kick it in just a little bit more. I'm getting pretty close. Kick this on in until it stops. Here we go. Very fine cuts. I, I don't take spring passes. I don't do that kind of thing. I always take a cut. Because this, uh, this machine is real, real solid. Oh, my. That is just looking very, very good. I'm going to back it off here a little bit. I should have a file handy, but I don't. Yeah, I do. I got one right here. So I'm going to do a little, real quick file on this thing and not disturb the setup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Looking good. I'm going to take a little bit more of a cut off, though. So. About five or so. I 
think that's looking really good. Okay, I'm gonna call that thread good, and I'm gonna flip this around and do the other thread. Okay, and switch back to uh, English. This end uh, was metric, and uh, the other end is English. Okay, I will be back soon. Had a real cantankerous moment trying to ship this thing into English threads. Uh, and that's mostly because I let it sit too long and it gets the, the gears kind of dry up in the back. So I got it in. So I'm going to cut this uh, 7 8 by 20 thread here. Back this to a good spot. Here, zero. You don't even touch that sucker. Okay, I'm going to use the stop, so I'll go ahead and do that. Get the stop yet. Loosen the lock here. And you bring it in until it just touches. Right there. Lock that. Then you can back it off, bring it over, and it will stop with the cross line. And I mentioned before, if you want to slip it in a couple thousandths, you loosen the lock and you can go out and use this outer dial for shaving the threads on both sides. If you feel like you want to do that, I do sometimes. Okay, so I got it set. I'm going to go ahead and take a good bite out of it. And uh, I'm using the thread dial. So here it goes. Let's see if I can crash, huh? Get in some more. Looking good. One, four. There you go. Come on. Juice on there. And there we go. Watch my number. in so nicely. Okay, where is that? Oh, I think it's over here. Yep. I think I'm far on the top of these threads here. Get that burr off them. Just looking at it, it looks like about 10 thousandths more. Oh, let's see how Little wax ring on there. Make sure wax, castor ball D, and other toxic things. There we go. I'm going to give it about a five. Looking good. Oh, wait for the next one. One whoever had my hand on the wrong one. Test here. I have a device you can test that with. How it landed? We'll test it with this thing here. See how we're doing? I think it's still going to be too tight. Well, maybe not. No, it's just right. No, slightly. No, no, no. I'm going to call that good. It's a nice snug fit. Goes on. I was thinking of taking another 2000s. Whoa. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is pull that out, install it into uh, 
this and then hook the head up to it. Okay. <laughs> One more thing done here. Okay. Alright, got it done. Now this is an awesome sight. A 5 inch wall hopper head in the 50 tape rope uh, number 2 brown and short mill. Let's have a look at that. It's feeding six thousandths per revolution. You can see that this is stationary collar here. And when you push those pins in, each one feeds one half thousand. You can watch it feed out. This is incredible um, versatility to this small machine. This mill has a lot of y-axis travel, so I moved the head um, out an inch and a half extension. Okay, well, I got that done. I've got it adapted to the 40 spindle too, and I demonstrated it cutting a, a D16 back plate, and it did a perfect job. Okay. This is going to be kind of a choppy video. I had a, a few uh, problems along the way, uh, like shifting the, the 10 double M to uh, uh, inlay threads. It goes to the metric threads easier. That's because I don't use it anymore. Okay, I hope you're all doing good and have a good day, and I will be back with my next turn. Bye-bye.